name is Birdbrain, and today we are talking about optimization in your OpenGL scene. So, are you sometimes experiencing lags or very slowdowns in your Harmony scene in OpenGL? Um, today's video is for you. So, if you're using a rig that is a 360 rig, as people say, or like a smooth rig, or whatever people call it these days, basically a rig where every piece is usually one or very few images into your drawing substitution, but it's moving with a deformer, so it means that everything has a deformer. And you know what's heavy in Harmony? Um, deformers, especially weighted deforms. But also, we can't help it. We have to use them. It's like saying, I will not animate a 3D character with long hair because it's heavy. Which makes sense, but also, it's 2023, right? It's We do these things, they're heavy, but computer are, you know, usually able to take it. If your computer is not able to take it because you're seeing these bunkers and there's like 8 characters in it, Z-Bird Brain is there to help you out, okay? So, if you have a lot of textures in your rig or you have a lot of deformer, here are some little options that can help you work more easily in Harmony. The first one is node caching, and I have the documentation right here. I really recommend checking it out. So, node caching is when an element of a rig is cached. So, I mean, go read it. It's very useful. Um, I'm just going to show you how it works right here. So, if I go into my node view and I find my rig, I can take a composite, put it under, and in that composite, I will go here and I'm going to cache it. So I'm going to click on cached and then, you know, I can still make my modification and whatever. But then when I exit my rig and I go in my camera view here and I activate my cache, you can choose from 64 to 64 and different numbers like this. And this is going to kind of replace your rig by a very, very easy image in a way. Of course, in the back end, it's more than that. I'm just keeping it easy for like five minute tutorial. But basically, it kind of makes it so that your rig is not the thing that is fully red. It's like a series of image in a way. And depending on if you choose, you know, 64 by 64, 188, uh, 128, and different numbers, you're gonna get more and more quality, but understand that the higher the number, the slower it will get to render, right? But sometimes if you have like lots of character and you just wanna see their, in their kind of interaction together, you can set a lower things and just have your scene play. And you see now it's very fast to play my different frames. Um, of course, 64 is a bit extreme. Sometimes just setting it to 128 or 256 is gonna make a huge difference in your playback. So that can help. Don't forget that this is supposed to include many drawings connected to the composite. If you use 500 cache, it's gonna be useless. It's stupid. The goal with cache is to take 500 image and cache them into one. If you have 500 image and you put 500 cache, it's the same as if you didn't have any cache, right? It's not gonna be helpful. So take your rig, cache it, and then it's gonna make your scene playback faster. Usually, it should. So that's one option. The other option is to temporarily hiding any heavy elements, such as any extra rigs in your scene. If you have seven characters in your scene and you only need to see what this one is doing, go ahead and hide or disconnect the other, the other rigs and it's gonna make it easier on your scene, both into the camera view, the timeline. So just remove them temporarily from sight and it should make it better. And if none of this works, my ultimate thing that I do when I have too much of a heavy scene, look at a show like Lion Guards with like eight different quadrupeds character. Using all these rigs in your scene will not work. Like, it won't. Um, just like if you're using a 3D scene and you try to see all your characters, it's not gonna work either. So in Harmony, what you can do is called an intermediate rendering technique. So basically, you're gonna set a right node under your rig and you're gonna render an image sequence. Okay, I have a full tutorial on that. I'm not gonna explain it too much today, but basically you're gonna render a set of images, usually EXR, and then you will re-import these images in your seed and then use the bitmap sequence instead of the vector rig because a rig has lots of layers, lots of cutters and everything, so it is heavier than a series of image sometimes. The other thing that might be helpful if you're using a rig with lots of texture is to use either a visibility node. I'm gonna show you what the visibility node is. So a visibility node, if you connect it to something, you can choose if you display it in OpenGL or in soft render. I helped on many productions that have lots of textures and what we would do is we would have a visibility node and it would hide the textures in OpenGL and only have them render into the final render. So that in OpenGL we would have the opposite where we would have uh, a visibility node that would make only the vector drawing appear in OpenGL and not in soft render. So you can use that node sp sp like in, in many places in your rig, but this is per individual elements. If you're having a slowdown as well, you can use a OpenGL bypass. This node is very easy to use. Um, I covered it before in the past as well. You can read the documentation for it. Basically, there's one side where you connect the things you want to see in OpenGL and one side where you want to see when you connect the things you want to see in a render. So if you have a scene that you're doing compositing on and there's a lot of textures applied to it, you can connect all the texture uh, in that side and on this side, you can like omit them or maybe it's the other side. I don't remember which one is which. I always just try it. Maybe they could make it more clear. 
So as a little example here, I have my two characters, so Wu and his cat, uh, connected here in this composite. I see them both in OpenGL and in Render. However, if I use this OpenGL bypass, I'm going to connect it here, and then I'm going to put the cat to the left and Wu to the right, which means that in OpenGL, I will see the cat because it's to the left. And in render view, I'm going to see Wu because it's connected to the right. That's how this node works. So imagine that if you have a very complex scene to the left, you put whatever you want to see in your OpenGL and to the right, you would put the same version of the scene maybe, but with the texture. And that's what we would do in like a daisy a lot where we were doing compositing. Well, the animation would just go here and everything else would go to the right. And yeah, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you again next week for another video. Bye bye.